Hey guys, it's Lori at Not Forgotten Farm. Glad to be back here. I haven't been here in my studio doing a videotape in months and months and months. Um, anyway, I'm back from a really nice trip to Tip City, Ohio, where Ali Striebel um, was teaching a, or holding a workshop that I was a teacher at, and we had the best time. If you have never been to Tip City, Ohio, it's beautiful. There was stores and quaint little uh, restaurants, and Joan and I had a fabulous trip. Um, we went shopping and, you know, ate really well. Not healthy, but really well. Uh, but that's okay. That's what you do on a trip, right? So the class that I taught there was actually a combination punch needle and rug hooking uh, project, which is this right here. I call it Crowjack. Um, I taught the girls how to punch. Some of the students had already been punchers, they knew, and some of the other ones that uh, were there I helped. Oh, well, I showed them how I do my way of punching, which is a little bit different maybe than um, some of the teachers or designers that you may have taken a class from. Uh, so yeah, this was the class project. Uh, if you go into my Facebook or up on my blog, you'll see Allie's beautiful rendition of this that she appliqued and then needle felted uh, on her hand dyed wool and then she put eyelash yarn around it just gorgeous in perfect alley style Alice Allie I shall always be Allie to me um, so yeah that was that and then while the girls were punching during the class uh, I went over a lot of different techniques for finishing and just how to use your ultra punch needle, um, you know, on the different height settings that you can do on that punch needle. Um, you can get so many effects, uh, it's, it's fabulous. But I drew up this little guy, Boo, um, on my weaver's cloth. I wanted them to see the edging that I did on something I'll show you in just a second. Uh, so I, I punched all this on the number one setting with Valdani. Uh, Pearl cotton number eight doubled. Um, and then I went ahead and I did French knot eyes, nose. I did kind of little weird straight stitch for his nose. Um, I embroidered the spider web, the little spider hanging there. And of course I have the word boo above it. I did polka dots in the background. I don't know if you could see them. So I did a combination of Valdani and then this background here is like 3033 DMC. Anyway, the edge. The edging I did on number four setting on the Ultra Punch. And I went around this three times. So there's three rows. So you can see that it's, let me just do this a minute because it'll help it to stand out a little bit more. You can see this edge stands out and it just makes a cool little frame I think so I'm gonna make a pin out of it because I love it and I think I'm gonna offer this as a free pattern for my members up on the um, punch needle guild so stay tuned for that the other things that I've been punching lately uh, are well this guy this is a snowy owl well a dirty snowy owl, I guess. I am um, showing this. This is the model that is for the project that you guys will be getting when you either subscribe to or purchase the issue of the huge mega Christmas winter issue of Punch Needle Primitive Stitcher Magazine by Deb Jokum. Um, and this guy's in there. So I did my little glass eyes as I love to do I want to do uh, I edged this in sari silk ribbon by just tying a knot stick it in my thread my needle whipping the uh, sari ribbon around the edge I finished it like this because you know it's just quick and simple um, filled with sawdust so yeah so that that was another punch needle thingy that I had done recently and then the other day, I got a wild hair, so to speak, and started on a couple other punch needle uh, projects that will be up and coming 
Christmas winter uh, designs. So this one I think you all may have seen on either Instagram, Facebook, or both. Um, this one is the Yule Mule because I have donkeys and you know Santa should be riding a mule as far as I'm concerned. So this is done in a mix of DMC, I think I did the donkey in DMC, two different DMCs, and then majority of the rest is all uh, Valdani size number eight doubled. Again, I double it. I pull from the middle of the ball and the outside of the ball and I put it in my medium tip needle. This is all worked on uh, the number one setting. And this is the edging that I wanted to show the girls at the class. So this time I put my ultra punch needle on number four and all I did was do two rows all the way around. So you can see it kind of, the light is not good in here, but you can see how it just frames it. It frames it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll embellish this with some beads because, you know, I'm on a bead kick now thanks to my girl tribe that I hang out with who are just now obsessed with beading and whatnot, but whatever. Um, so that's it for the punch needle that I've been doing. Okay. The other things I've been doing, I had um, my girlfriend Heather stitches models for me and she had stitched this up. Now, don't yell at me. These are, these were supposed to, this was supposed to be out for summer, but you know, it's, I'm busy. So this, this is Sunflower Farm. So there you can see the little uh, house and the sunflowers and just the letter, or not letters, numbers that I did. Just a quick and easy little stitch. Uh, I think I did this on my 30 or 32 old farmhouse linen hand dyed that, uh, you know, I'll have available. So that's that. And then I stitched the model for um, something that I had wanted to do for a while. But I, I named it Indian Summer because that's when it was supposed to come out. So I don't know if you can see without the glare. I'm trying to not get the glare of the lights. Let me put this above it to see if that'll stop the glare of the lights. That doesn't work at all. So anyway, it's a turkey and pumpkins and a moon and two big honking ears of corn on the cob. So Sunflower Farm, um, what do they call this? Indian Summer. These will be out. I'm going to try to get these out by this weekend coming. So that's cross stitch. So working on my uncounted cross stitch and my embroidery, I've been doing a little bit of. I wanted to show you this. Uh, our Christmas open house is coming the first Friday and Saturday in December. Both days were open from 10 till 4. But if you come in, both days or either or but for both days from 12 from 12 till 2 yeah 12 till 2 I'm gonna do a, a little make it take it class for this which is a little embroidery top half and uncounted cross stitch bottom half you'll get the hoop you'll get the ribbon you'll get the hand dyed Osnaberg um, and all the threads to, to make this. And I'm gonna be here to show you both Friday and Saturday, first Friday and Saturday in December during our Christmas open house. Be here in the studio and I'm gonna show you how to do this. Now, you'll get the hoop, you'll get the rib ribbon, whether you want to finish it into, um, you know, an in the hoop finish, totally up to you, it's yours. You can take it home and stuff it and, you know, make a little uh, pin keep out of it or hang another, hang the ribbon on it as an ornament. Um, but yeah, I just thought it was a cute little thing. And just to get you guys that are wanting to learn how to do the uncounted cross stitch and or embroidery, eh, I went ahead and then combined them both. So you've got French knots, uh, stem stitch, not stem stitch, straight stitch, uncounted cross stitch. Really, you know, not a 
not a hard project at all. And I think it can be done in two hours. At least, you know, I can get you started on it. So it's a quote unquote make and take. And I finished the back like this just to, and I'll show you how to do that, but whatever, whatever. All right, so went to Allie's um, house. Oh my God, I went to Allie Strebel's house. Joan and I went after we packed up our um, class and all on Saturday. And Joan and I lost our minds because in there, in her little cottage behind her beautiful house, were all the models that we've come to know and love um, from Allie and Sally, you know, Cordy from um, Kindred Spirits. There's a fruit fly in here or something. My brain just went because, you know, I got in there and there's fibers everywhere. There's rug hooking, there's needle felting, there's applique, there's quilting, um, there's I don't know, but it was all there, and, you know, I came home like, oh, my God, what am I doing? Anyway, so I came home with more of this for needle felting, and I've got this for in the shop. Um, we'll have it here in the shop for the open house uh, because I'm hoping to get a bunch of new classes together to do for the, you know, 2020 schedule. So I also had to buy, that's for those that don't know, this is Allie's hand dyed um, roving, wool roving in her primitive colors. So that's for, that's for sale here in the shop or will be. I had to get myself to play with her pencil rovings, you know, which is just very thin strips of, it looks like yarn and you can do whatever you want with it, but if she showed me that if you take it apart, it's like this real thin strip. Oh my God. All right, so yeah, so I got all, you know, I got a bunch of that for me. And then I had to buy the, the honking bag of this for me, for my working uh, palette so that I can do models and whatnot with and classes, so. And then Allie has been dyeing Osnaberg along with her beautiful hand-dyed woolens and her um, hand-dyed trims and silk and ribbons and, I don't know, Allie, what else do you dye? You dye everything, but she, you dye it beautifully. She dyes it beautifully. I hand-dye my Osnaberg with walnut because, you know, first of all, I have a thousand walnut trees here and I, I want to use that. But I mean, Allie uses these colors, these rich, saturated colors, you know, like, you know, really, this kind of thing. But her Osnaberg is killing me because. So this is a piece of Allie's Osnaberg. Osnaberg, folks. Look at it. Look at it. Yeah. And here's another piece. What? Osnaberg. It doesn't look like Osnaberg. It looks like high-end linen, which uh, her and I are talking about also, because I would like her to make, dye some linen for me. Um, but I mean, Osnaberg? All right, so Osnaberg um, is what this is. This is my dyed Osnaberg, but you know, it's dyed with the walnut. And here's Allie's richly saturated Osnaberg. Um, you can stitch on it. You can use it as ground cloth. You can use this to uh, embroider on. You can cross stitch, counted cross stitch. It's like a 35, 36 uh, count uneven weave. You can use it as a foundation cloth and applique on top of it. So anyway, you get the gist, you get the gist. What else have I got? I don't think I got anything else. Except for maybe one more thing that uh, I'm stupid because you know, I look up on Pinterest and I see things and I shouldn't. So I went out and I bought a wood burner because I now have to wood burn little gourds. Yeah, I think I'm gonna make some gourd ornaments and some gourd necklaces and I'll show you that, you know, coming in the next video, so. All right guys, take care, take it easy, keep creating, come back and see me. Let's be.